Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll here in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're going to have a microphone shootout on drum overheads. All right, so when we talk about recording drums, one of the most critical microphones in that equation for me personally is the overhead microphones. The overhead microphones, we're not just capturing cymbals, although we are getting a lot of cymbal in there, of course, but we're capturing a picture of the entire drum kit. The way the snare drum, the tom-toms, the hi-hat, everything bleeds into the overheads, and it has this, this uncanny ability to glue the entire set together. All of a sudden, the close mics that we have on the kick drum, the snare drum, etc., sound cohesive along with the overheads. So the choice of the microphone that we use for the overheads is critical. Our friends at Warm Audio have a pretty vast product line of microphones. The way those microphones all have a unique character goes a long way into defining the drum set sound that we're looking for. So let's do some side-by-side -side comparisons on microphone versus microphone and let you guys decide which one is right for you. All right, so let's talk about the WA67. This microphone is a tube condenser microphone that's based on a classic design from the 60s that's still to this day one of the most revered microphones of all time. Just a studio workhorse because it's got this, because it's tube, it's very rich and sounds, you know, amazing, of, of course, but it's got a very smooth frequency response as well. So this is one of those microphones that you can put in front of about any singer and it's going to get the job done. But it's not just vocals. Uh, it sounds great on acoustic guitar, piano, drum overheads as we're getting ready to hear, so much more. It, it is just, a, just one of my absolute go-tos. Let's give it a listen. Okay, next let's talk about the large diaphragm tube microphone, the WA-47. This guy is patterned after a German classic that to this day is still one of the most revered vocal mics of all time. But like so many other incredible microphones, it's not just for vocals. It sounds great on a lot of things. Um, it, 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 it's really known for its really rich, bigger than life sound. Everything you put in front of this sounds bigger and better than it did before it went through this circuit. So let's give it a listen on drum overheads. All right, let's talk about the Warm Audio WA87R2. This guy is a large diaphragm condenser as well. However, it is not tube, it is solid state. This guy is based on a design that came out of Germany in the mid 60s. And that particular microphone, about every commercial studio you can name that has ever existed or still exists, had many, many of these microphones because it really become one of the most workhorse utility mics of all time. You could put this guy on overheads, like we're gonna hear in just a minute, uh, piano, vocals, acoustic guitar, really, you could throw this on anything and it was gonna work. So it became a very, very popular uh, microphone. When I think of this microphone, I think of its frequency response. It's gonna be different than about anything else we hear in our shootout. It has this mid-range thing, and you'll hear it. It has this mid-range thing that just kind of brings things in the mix forward in that, in that range, uh, kind of makes it pop out where some of the mics that have maybe more extended high end or, or a, a boost you know, on the top end brings out definition in one way. This guy brings it out in a different way. So it's really handy to mix and match with some of these other guys. Let's give it a listen.
right guys, say hello to my little friend, the WA-84. This is a small diaphragm condenser mic that is based on a mic that came out of Germany in the mid 60s. And it is another one of those just studio workhorses that you find in every commercial studio in the country. This microphone, while it is small and has a small diaphragm, about the only thing small about it is the fact that it is small. It sounds huge. It is one of my favorite small diaphragm condensers of all time, and it is versatile enough that I use it I, I, literally on orchestral days. I use it on violins and violas. I've used it on piano. I've used it on tom-toms. I use it on percussion, hi-hats. Yeah, there, there's almost nothing I, that I haven't used it on. But one of my favorite a, um, applications for this microphone is indeed drum overheads. Now let's listen why. All right, now let's talk about the WA-251. And this guy sounds as pretty as it looks. It is a large diaphragm tube condenser microphone that is also patterned after a mic from, uh, out of Germany from the late 50s. When you talk about it, you, you have to talk about the top end. It's got this beautiful lift to the top end that really brings an air to everything that, it, that passes through it. Um, of course, what we're gonna talk about is cymbals. You'll notice that right away. But because of that, acoustic guitar, many vocals, so many different things. Uh, pianos sound amazing to this thing. But also notice the really rich and buttery, creamy mid-range that this guy has. One of my favorites in the Warm Audio family. Okay, let's talk about the WA-14. This is a large diaphragm solid state condenser microphone. Now this guy is based on a microphone that came out of uh, Europe in the 70s, I believe, which has had a lot of different incarnations. The, the, the microphone that this is based on is the most prized, cherished version of that uh, lineage. Uh, it has the a copy of the original brass capsule design, which is, it, it just has this very nice airy top end and as well, you'll, you'll be surprised how much bottom end you get out of this guy as well. It's, it, it works on uh, acoustic guitars, overheads, tom-toms, uh, some vocalists. You know, this is the Freddie Mercury uh, vocal microphone. So many things, but let's give, it a, uh, let's give it a good listen on overheads. Okay guys, last but not least, let's talk about the WA-47 Junior. This guy, you hear the, num the number 47 in there, and you're right, it does indeed share some characteristics of the high-end tube microphone 47. The capsule is the exact same capsule, but that's where the similarities end. The circuit itself is completely different. Instead of being tube, it is a FET circuit, so the sound is much different. Not, but when I say much different, that doesn't mean it's not great in its own right, because it is. It's extremely versatile. I use this guy all the time. I have seven, literally seven of them here that I throw around on orchestra days, rhythm section days. They, you know, I use them on drum rooms, um, so many things, tom-toms, but they also sound great, as you can imagine, on drum overhead. So let's give them a listen.
All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Now, I am making these files available to download. You can grab these, download them, play them on your own studio monitor so you can really know exactly which one of these microphones may work best for you, okay? Until next time, happy mixing.